Are we seeing a shift now with Putin? Is there an outcome that you can see? Absolutely. What we're seeing, that the, that process that began in the 1990s of Russia connecting with the world economy and being integrated with the world economy is very rapidly going in reverse now as these crushing sanctions are being imposed. Russia is being disconnected from the world economy. What does the new map for Vladimir Putin look like? Uh, he grossly miscalculated. Uh, uh, I think he obviously thought this would be quick. I think he also overestimated uh, Europe's dependence on Russian energy and that that would be his high card. It uh, turned out that, among other things, for the extraordinary growth in U.S. LNG, which was nowhere in 2016, and this year uh, will be the largest uh, LNG exporter in the world, has offset uh, Russian gas in Europe. And it may be tough, depending on what happens, but uh, that, that it's manageable. And so he doesn't have that high card, those well, high cards. Dan, let's talk about the word manageable. And I'll take it to one extreme, and you can maybe rein me back in. Are we really thinking about a Europe without Russian energy in our future? No, I don't think that happens for a long time. And sometimes people overestimate Russian gas was 29% of Europe's gas uh, last year. Big number, but that means that about 70% came from other sources. So, but I think it will... Uh, uh, what, when this crisis is over, whatever form they end takes, uh, Russia will be a supplier. But what will be changed is no longer will it be seen as Russia is a reliable supplier, which they've been saying for 50 years. And we heard it from the Germans. They're going to build LNG receiving terminals uh, so that they can have the diversity and depend also on the world market and uh, not be held so much rigidly to Russian gas. And Nord Stream 2 is going to, that pipeline is going to lie in suspended a animation uh, beneath the Baltic Sea. Dan, you mentioned the Germans. The legacy of Chancellor Merkel, the history books don't look kind right now as we look back on her. And I just wonder what happens with nuclear from here, Dan. And if you can, take a moment, because we have the time with you. Just take a moment to walk through what a monster change we've just seen from a German chancellor in just a couple of days? Well, I think that Chancellor Merkel, it was, it was a different circumstance. She had no illusions about Putin. I mean, she could speak Russian. And I mean, from the beginning when he's uh, knowing that she had a fear of dogs, brought his big dog into the room. So, and I remember being in St. Petersburg when the two of them were on the stage together, the ice was palpable to the audience. But the circumstances were different, and Putin at that point uh, appeared to be a more rational, uh, if tough, actor. But I think now with the new chancellor, the statements, I think if she were in power, she probably would have said the same thing. But it is a dramatic reversal. And Putin, his, one of his major games was to welcome, to break NATO, to weaken NATO. He's done just the opposite. He's brought it together, and Germany is going to go to 2% of GDP for defense spending. We talk about the consequences for Russia as they get locked out of the financial system, but can you game out the financial consequences for Germany, for the United States, for the rest of Europe, as we do get uh, some sort of uncertainty, not only about the carve-outs for the energy sector in all of these sanctions, but just how feasible the payment for any of this will be? Well, I think that's the, the payment system. Even, you know, it's been said initially that the goal was to carve out energy so it would not hit Europe. But risk officers are not going to are, are going to be very cautious. They're going to over comply. You already see that people are not uh, doing letters of credit. Tanker owners are going to think twice before sending their tankers. So the energy trade is going to be disrupted. It's, this is not going to be a smooth thing. Uh, how bad it gets depends on how the war goes, what the Russians do, and so forth. But I think you're going to see. Uh, in effect, a, 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 sanction on, in a, a sanction on Russian energy just by the behavior of market actors. And everybody today, I know, is calling their lawyers saying, can you understand what the sanctions are? We don't want to make a mistake here. We don't want to get a $6 billion fine a year from now. Meanwhile, we are getting news about a possible oil release, a crude release from strategic petroleum reserves of a number of major oil-consuming nations, including the U.S., somewhere of 70 million barrels. Do you think this will move the dial at all? I think it will. I think that if you add up, what is it, U.S. production is going to increase a million barrels a day. 
there could be more oil out of the Gulf. If their sanctions are taken off uh, Iran, you get a million barrels a day. And I think it was inevitable that they would use strategic stocks. After all, this is what strategic stocks were built for. And so I know the administration certainly is, wants to go in that direction. It'll be interesting to see what the Chinese do this time.